What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope all you lot are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel, to Football Therapy. Welcome to today's Chelsea News video, which is exciting, interesting, and a little bit different. I want to talk about some contract renewals, which is a positive piece of news for Chelsea. I want to talk about Andre Onana, what's my name? Sorry, I had to. The Ajax goalkeeper, who is excellent, by the way, wanting to come to Chelsea in the summer. I'll talk about that at the end. I'm on the fence with Kepa, but that's huge news in terms of having an elite option. We'll talk about him in a minute. And also, I went on understat.com. I looked at Chelsea's expected goals and expected assists metric. Oh my God, we are missing Christian Pulisic so, so much. I'm gonna make it simple for you, but I'm gonna show you exactly why he's so important and how Chelsea have been sorely missing Captain America. But before we do get into this content today, reminder for you there, watching right now to please do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do sub, hit that bell notifications icon, it's important. Why not like the video to help me out? Follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram Lives. All right, let's get into it. Right, I remember when I watched Chelsea play in the cup against Grimsby Town at Stamford Bridge. I was very, very impressed with, of course, the likes of Rhys James, but I was incredibly impressed with two players that came on from the academy, Tino Andrin and Ian Matson. Tino Andrin is like an attacking midfielder. He looks like he's built like Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but he actually is more of a number 10. People say, oh, play Ruben as a 10. But Ruben does his best work from deep, progressing the ball up. This kid looks like he can play in the number 10, yet he's built like a beast. So, essentially these two players that I'm talking about are the two players that are re-signing new contracts, apparently, with Chelsea Football Club. So, Tino Andrin, the beast number 10, and Ian Matson, the young, pacey left back. Superb news, both excellent players, and really, they're the next two sort of up and coming bright sparks to come into the Chelsea first team, obviously train with the first team often. You've got Billy Gilmore, Connor Gallagher, Mark Gurhey, Gallagher and Gurhey are on loan obviously, but you've got these players that are obviously in the thoughts of Chelsea, but these two youngsters that often play with the development squad, they're good to go next season into the first team. Just my opinion. So anyway, that's some good news. Now. I'm going to leave Anana for the end because it's a really big, interesting story that does actually spark debate because people are sitting on the fence with Kepler and it's a delicate situation. So I'll leave that to the end, but it is interesting. So Chelsea need to score goals, right? That's the problem. They can't break down these low blocks at home. They have a lot of possession. They pass the ball around a lot, but they need that cut and thrust and they've been lacking of late. Christian Pulisic's been out for like weeks, best part of two months, maybe? Still, we all remembered how good he was early doors, but what I wanted to look at and take a bit of more of a deep dive on was his XG and XA, expected goals and expected assists per 90 to see really what he was doing. So I went on understat.com, had a little ganders, and it pretty much highlights that Chelsea are sorely missing Captain America. Top of the pops, um, non-surprisingly, is Tammy Abraham because he's the one that's getting all the chances. But i tell you what, a very, very close second was Christian Pulisic, and there is a big drop off from that. So, Christian Pulisic's expected goals and expected assists per 90, which is per match, that's the way they do it, right? Expected goals, 0.51 per 90. That's over a goal every other game. Now, that's like a striker return. If a striker scores every other game, that's pretty decent, right? They end the season with 19 Premier League goals. Do you know what I mean? That's a good, good return. So for a dribbly, creative little winger that likes to pass deep and make key passes over a goal every other game, superb expected goals per 90 metric. Mm. And of course there's assists as well. Now before Pulisic came to Chelsea, I thought he'd be a more creative assisting type, but his expected assists per 90 is 0.1. One nine, so not quite 0 0.2, which isn't a lot, but he's an offensive weapon, so meh. So obviously, those combined expected goals and expected assists create a 0 0.7 expected goal contribution per 90. 0 0.7, an elite offensive return in the Premier League from a very young creative player. Now remember, I was just saying, he's not necessarily always trying to get on the end of things, although Lampard wants him to. He does like to pick up the ball, dribble, play maybe like a diagonal back into midfield, more creative passes, he can do all that. 
But in terms of going forward, this dude is an offensive weapon. So like I said, he sits a close second to Tammy Abraham on the Chelsea charts. 0.7 expected contributions per 90. Tammy Abraham is 0.72. So just a smidgen ahead of Christian Pulisic. They're both by far and away the most two important offensive weapons for Chelsea. Uh, third and fourth place is Willian and Mount. And there's quite a big drop off to those two. So really it's Tammy Abraham and Christian Pulisic are those two super important players. People were like, oh God, what happens to Tammy Abraham if he gets injured? If you look at the numbers, it's been the same for Pulisic, and we can see what happens when Pulisic gets injured. We just don't score. So I wanted to highlight that, and that is good news. I know it's frustrating because he's been out and Chelsea have been evidently suffering, but he's coming back into the side after this winter break. I think he's good to go pretty much straight away, which is superb news. Chelsea have sorely missed him. Hopefully he can do work against Manchester United. And who knows, maybe even score a goal because that would be lovely, wouldn't it? All right, let's talk about the goalkeeper situation. Kepa, right? I'm on the fence. If you watch this channel and you know me, you will know that I absolutely subscribe to the concept of he's a very talented goalkeeper, okay? He's good, he can do it, but he's not been good and he's not been doing it. Whether you wanna blame his emotional breakup or a poor run of form, he's been in a poor run of form. A lot of people around football media, pundits and stuff, are just like, you just gotta get rid of him. Are people that I really respect their opinions are saying are just cold and like, he's done, he's not good enough. Sure, he can do this every now and again, but you need consistency. Consistency is paramount in a top Premier League team. A club like Chelsea need a consistently good goalkeeper. I get that. Now, personally, in an ideal world, I would loan Kepa out on a one, maybe even two year loan. That sounds radical, right? But I don't want Chelsea to get stung like him ending up somehow becoming the Real Madrid keeper and winning three Champions Leagues. That would be frustrating. <laughs> that would feel like another Kevin De Bruyne situation, you know? And I genuinely believe he's very, very talented. I'm not necessarily thinking that's going to happen, but at the moment, he does not seem to be the answer. Unless, of course, he comes back into the team, which I believe he should do after the break and performs amazing for the rest of the season. But in my head, if he doesn't perform just to the level, I think he should go on a long loan. Chelsea bring in a keeper and just watch Kepa from afar maybe bring it back like Thibaut Courtois after Atletico Madrid. Do you see what I mean? That kind of thing. But that brings us to the story of Andre Nana, the Ajax goalkeeper, who's an excellent goalkeeper, right? If you cast your mind back to the Ajax game when they went two men down <laughs> and Chelsea were at home and it somehow ended four all, Chelsea should have won that game like seven or eight, four. Andre Nana and the girl was making absolutely elite saves. Even that last second amazing save when he got down very, very low. The Cameroon international is 23 years old. He's very, very young. He's six foot three. So he's got like a good three inches on Kepa. He is just an amazing, an amazing shot stopper. And obviously he's playing in the era Eredivisie, but he's just so, I think with goalkeepers, it doesn't really matter so much if you're just saving good shots all the time. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's not really Really the same as an outfield player going oh well they're not playing in this physical league or fast league if you're a goalkeeper and you're making elite saves it doesn't really matter what league you're in and the fact was he was doing it in the champions league anyway this season and last season he's an absolutely excellent goalkeeper and if you just took out this kepa situation say chelsea didn't have a goalkeeper and Chelsea were in for him, I'd be like, yes please, he'll do. He's an absolutely superb, perfect candidate. You know, in an ideal world, Chelsea aren't just gonna go get Oblak, do you know what I mean? So this guy's really, really young, he's really, really good, and he's come out and he said he wants to move to Chelsea. Or in fact, he's come out and said he wants to move to London at the end of the season, but Tottenham and Chelsea are probably both potential suitors, but he's come out and said he'd prefer Chelsea. No shock there. I've read on a report that Ajax would want 50 million pounds for him, which is probably about right, to be honest. If he wants the move and Chelsea can maybe work something out, who knows, maybe they can loan them Kepa or something. I just don't know, I'm, doing all, I'm playing football manager now, do you know what I mean, with these theoretical ideas. Apparently Frank Lampard isn't a fan of Kepa Aretha Balaga. If you to believe these reports, again, you guys, I'm only looking at what the media says, I'm reading around whatever I can find as reliable, but what is reliable? I'm just like you, I'm consolidating and presenting to the channel. 
Apparently Frank Lampard isn't a fan of Kepa, but I could believe that anyway. And if you said to Frank, what about Andre and Nana, he'd probably go, what's my name? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Well, it's a bad joke. It's a bad joke. He'd probably love Onana. Still, it's a really interesting one, and I wonder what will happen, because, like I said, if Kepa performs all season really well, makes some huge saves against Bayern Munich, becomes a cult hero again, all this will be forgotten, and he'll just be good Kepa again. But really, Chelsea will need to keep a keen eye on him, because, it, like I said before, it's consistency which makes a great Premier League keeper. And really, he's going to have to buck his ideas up this uh, season anyway, because... Willy Caballero is not going to cut it. I know Chelsea recently promoted or they uh, signed up their youth keeper, I forget his name, to the um, B squad in the Champions League. It doesn't really mean much. But the point being, Kepa really does need to step up at this point. Anyway, what do you lot think? It's a very interesting situation. Express your thoughts and opinions on Kepa and Andre Onana. Would you bite the bullet and sign a new keeper? What do you think about Kepa? Also, let me know what your feelings on Christian Pulisic. Do you think he's our best winger? I mean, that expected goal contributions is pretty massive. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments section below. Other than that, guys, if you have enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. That would mean a lot. Why not subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so? It's the road to 40,000 subscribers. Boy, what a mental journey this season has been, starting the channel just before the season. Look at me now, nearly on 40k. It's an evil empire, football therapy. Oh yeah, follow me on social media, at Football Yannick, on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby